Hello everyone, welcome to Craft Academy. My name is Stephanie Waitman. I'm gonna be joined by a fantastic guest. In fact, he is a world-renowned expert in the magic and art of marbling. I'd like to introduce you to Craig. Hello, Craig. Oh, I'm so excited. Hello. Hi. Oh, oh gosh. Do you this know, is a I, stunning colour on you. Oh, thank you. Do you know, I've been watching marbling and I went desperate to learn more about it, but learn the history, learn the art of it, learn how all the different things and all those different patterns that you make. It's like magic. Mm, it is a great fun craft to play with. And it's, I love sharing it. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to do like a sort of a mini workshop together. Oh, gosh, that is and brilliant. And explore every avenue we can. Well, do you know, this is the time to get out your marbling kit if you've already got one. And what we're going to do is we're going to take you through the lesson plan that we've got. So you can see exactly what we're going to be teaching you, what you're going to be learning in the comfort of your own home. So first of all, lesson one is going to be an introduction to marbling. And we're going to cover everything from the basic history, getting started, how to get the best out of things like fabrics and papers, but also how to clean up as well. And then in lesson two, we're going to do covering all the tools that you need, how you actually make the most to get the paint to float perfectly and all of those gorgeous background colours. And of course, when we've got an expert here, we've got to make the most of it. So we've got lesson three where we've got all the basic designs. So we're going to cover freestyle, stone marbling, Spanish marbling and arch marbling. And I can't wait to get started. Okay, so first of all, now now we've got Craig here, we're not letting him go anywhere for a whole hour. So Craig, I know that you've spent almost a lifetime <laughs> developing marbling and the techniques, but the history is really interesting as well, isn't mm -hmm. it? It originated in Japan, right yes. about 12th century, and they call it um, Sumanigashi, which is quite an interesting name. It means ink floating or floating ink. And literally, they used black ink on water. Ah, okay. Um, that's where it originated from. They used turpentine to create the contrasts and the images. Um, and that was only used for royalty, no, no, nobility, um, to the, the prince themselves. Because I guess it would have been quite, an, uh, you know, while everybody's just trying to, to every, keep every, survive on a day-to-day -day basis, this is something that would be a luxury, wouldn't it? It would be a complete luxury. It was um, considered a, a, a supreme tr trade in those days. Yes, because you were telling me before about how this was actually considered not only a job, but um, a very a prestigious job yes, as well. Yes, it was. It was. It was up in the... Uh, top five jobs uh, I suspect in those days wow. and uh, it, they, were, they were respected people um, with these uh, skills that they were developing um, and uh, yes it's, uh, it's, uh, it's been around since again 12th century um, but what happened was the, um, the influence of that marbling yes. was um, it's filtered through to Turkey yep. via the silk routes Okay. Uh, by the trading system. Yes. And uh, it became known as a Turkish marbling or Hebrew art. Uh, um, and that that might sound familiar on YouTube. There's yes. lots of various this, this, there's lots of things that are, um, you know, visible. You can watch. Yeah. Uh, um, and then it basically that what they did was instead of using uh, inks and water, yeah. they started use, utilizing oils on a thickened liquid. Okay. A gloopy, a gloopy liquid of some sort. Um, and then that developed into um, different colors um, and the influence of all those colors, the different patterns. Um, and it just developed from there on. And the influence started to broaden yeah. and filter through to the European countries. And it's really interesting because as it, in every country, we've sort of adopted different names for it. But what's really exciting is Craig is the absolute expert when it comes to having utilised all that history and developed a modern technique. And that's what you've really given a lifetime to is actually mm. building a modern technique that 
it works, is reliable, that you're going to get all of your best results with, and that's what this is all about. Yes. So shall we actually get started yes. then? Well, this so is... what do we need? Because you've talked about all these different liquids. Are they yes. hard to make? No, we've, we've spent years trying to develop the simplest possible way of having fun. Right. And utilizing um, this, this kit will give you um, precision printing. There's no uh, gloopy mess. There's no gray areas. The, the colors don't mix. So wow, there, there is so much, there's a lot more forgiving, I would say, with, than, than using an oil based paint. Yeah. So should we have a look in the yes. box? Do you know what I've loved is everybody that has seen and sort of spent time around you has just um, got so excited about what we can cover, what we can actually marble. We need to make the floater liquid, didn't we? I'd sort of get yes. you opening this box, really. It's like a Pandora's box of magic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is good fun. Now, this is the tray we'd use. Okay. So we just use it as a practice tray. Right. Um, it's designed in a white colour opaque white color so that you can see the designs when you drop it on the thickened water that we use. Oh, okay. So literally that thickened water, so that yeah. is the tray we're going to be using. Um, so put those aside. Yeah. So we've got the tray. These are the full step-by-step -step instructions which are in, in color form so you can enjoy enjoy the color of, of the set. I'm going to well, do, I tell do you like what. this. We actually don't need those though, do we? Because we're no, going to do the no. step. We're going to do everything <laughs> physically. So we, we're going to do the visual version of the I instructions. I only need those if you decide to go and have a cup of tea. <laughs> <laughs> All so right. We don't Great. need those. <laughs> okay. So in the kit, we have six colors. Uh -huh. So we've got the primaries with black and white, yeah. plus an extra lovely violet. Um, violet you can't mix by itself we're using red and blue you can get purple and so then we've just added the violet into the yeah. it's a very popular color yeah this is a stunning color i have to say that is yeah, lovely you said that. Yeah. it is it's a stunning deep beautiful <laughs> rich color um this is the floater powder okay now this is what we're going to mix physically and show you how this works this little floater powder will give you two liters of mixed mixed water. Do we have to mix it all in one go? I've got loads of questions. Sorry, that's fine. You know, I'm, I'm going to be asking Shoot you all away. the questions that everybody's shouting at the TV. <laughs> well, let's or take the everything out. So we've got four of these little sachets. Yeah. That will three months that they will keep in the fridge. So okay, you can what, reuse like this them. as a sachet or mixed? Now that needs to be mixed with two liters of water. So how long will it keep like this? About three months. Oh, about that. That yeah. will keep it for a lifetime. Ah, oh, fab. As it is. So Great. if you don't use a kit, you can still use it within yeah. a lifetime, within your lifetime. But these little sachets will be mixing that in front of you. Again, we have the white, the violet. Um, and we're going to be playing with these colors in a few minutes, aren't we? Yes, we are. So we've got the primaries with black and white. So primaries red, red, yellow, blue, uh, white and black, and the violets. Okay. Now these little pipettes are very useful. They'll come in handy in a second. And this is another mixture we're going to be mixing in front of the camera. Okay, so... So basically, we're going to boil some water. There is soft water in here. And that is the key word here, soft. Now, I've got a question there is, First of all, that means, you know, my kettle gets lime scale in it. My water's hard, isn't it? Yes, it is. Why does it need to be soft? Um, the softer the water, the better the quality of the print. Oh, um, The hard okay. water has too many chemicals in it and it interferes with the paints. So you'll get a flowery print. It won't be as crisp as you'd like it to be. So what if we need to... Oh, this doesn't sound stuffed, I think. Yes. What if we need to buy water? Well, the water can you that buy I. Soft water? You can indeed. In fact, it's <laughs> called know. just your basic iron water, which is deionized oh, okay. water. Okay, yeah. Oh, I know what I know. That, I that's that. what we use all the time. Okay. I live in Kent and it's just hard as uh, nails. Um, but yes, so I use deionized bottled water, is good. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so that's Gin? what. Does gin work? Gin? Well, I haven't tried gin yet. <laughs> I suspect I would be throwing it back. <laughs> no, One no. Or two. I'm not suggesting you should try that at home. <laughs> so let's okay. leave that over there. Yeah, of course. So basically, all we're going to do, it's a very simple process to mix your floater powder. It, again, is completely measured for you. So hence, you don't have to measure it yourself. Mm. It's all done. It's all accurate. So basically, it's a very simple process. Wait for the kettle to boil. Yeah. Um, 
which is in a few seconds. We're going to do two things at the same time. Okay. So we're going to we're going to create the alum solution, which is a mordant preparation for fabric and wood. Oh my gosh, that big word! <laughs> Hang on a minute. Stay it's back. a mordant. It's basically a preparation for material. Right. What? So, so what's it going to do? It's going to absorb the paint quicker and stabilize a little, little bit quicker. Okay. And also, it's also used for washing purposes. So okay. um, that you can wash the material in the washing machine. Ah, okay. Okay. So, so we're gonna. So, so basically, that's sort of like a fixative. Yes. And, well, um, yeah. I suspect so. Right. I suspect so. Yes. Good point. Mm, okay. <laughs> right. So um, that is pretty much done. Yeah. So just just before it boils, yeah. you can turn it off. Okay. Um, and that is two litres worth. Um, now, the alum crystals will obviously make, be made into a solution with a warm water, yep. as opposed to cold water. Okay. So they will, they will dissolve. Yep. Um, and that is what we prepare the material with. Yep. You can spray wood with it as well. Okay. Okay, good. So basically, we take our kettle. Um, now, um, for the children, let the parents do this. If for safety comes first, um, always. Wrong one. So here we have our floater powder. It's a very simple process. We're going to pour the water in first. Right, that's the two liters. Yep. We're going to throw this in all in one go and whisk. So we're going to start whisking first. Okay. There it goes. A whole lot. It's all empty. And we're going to basically keep doing this until the water gets slightly thick. Oh, it's magic. It's almost it's dissolved instantly. Instantly dissolved, yes. There's no lumps and bumps. Basically, all you're doing is you consistently stirring. Now, I can feel it getting thicker. Yep. And when it's getting thicker, you know that it's working and it's doing its thing. You want to feel that? Yeah, I can. I can see the consistencies changed. Oh, look at this! Oh, it's starting to go gloopy. Yes, that's you, what we want. Yeah, is that what we want? That's, that's exactly like... what we want. Wow! Oh my God, it's fabulous. Uh, what? How long do we have to wait now before we can start? Well, marbling? literally, we pull that into a container. Okay, so we've got. So we've got a container here. Yeah. Um, so you pull this into a container using a funnel. It's a lot easier to do it that way. Yeah. Leave it overnight to set and cool down. Right. And that will thicken to the consistency you need. Um, and that is going to keep for three months. Brilliant. So Where it's very do economical. I keep it? What do I do? In the outside or okay. in the fridge. Okay. But don't put this in the fridge when it's hot. No. You will defrost your fridge. <laughs> okay, because it's going to be very So, hot. should we put this to one side? Let's to... put that to one side. Because I know we've got quite a lot to get through in this hour. Yes. But now, we. We do exactly the same for the alum crystals. Yep. You don't have to use everything at once, but having um, said that... Do we need a whisk? Nope, no. Nope. Oh, okay. Just pour all the water in. Yeah. How much water do you we You can need? use up to six litres for this whole sachet. Okay. Just, I don't have six litres here, but basically that would be uh, six litres, or you can break this up. It's 10 grams per two litres of water, five grams per one litre of water. Okay. Now, basically, I'm going to put the whole lot in. It's going to dissolve and it's basically going to just become part of the water. And basically that's going to be the solution. You submerge your fabric in for two minutes. So literally, let's take a piece of fabric. If you've got your fabric, now this is a much bigger piece. We're going to throw it in and it's going to submerge for two minutes. Yeah. Once the two minutes is finished, you fish it out. Um, again, parents do this. It's a, a lot more feasible. Uh, what about safer. it's it's um, it's fine to touch the liquid and everything, though, isn't it? Yes, yes, it's yeah. fine. Now this would be hanging up to yeah. drip dry. Yeah. Once it's drip dried and, and dry, you can use it. And that's basically how you pre-treat material. Now you can pour this into another container and Save reuse it. it. Wow. Submerge anything you want to. Fabric wise, or you can pour it into a container, spray bottle, 
spray onto your wood and things that you feel are not porous enough. Okay. Right. But I don't do it on paper. I don't do it in tiles. Yeah. I don't do it in pottery. I don't do it on leather. I don't do it in cork. I do it on material mainly. How do we know which materials are the best ones to use then? The best way to do it is literally pour in your water into a container. Oh, just got enough. I've got some here. So we've got some water in here. So we're gonna just open this. All right, I've got water. That's fine. It's, it's, it's just water. I now, can see very I'm gonna good... be saving all my containers now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna happen, so basically, isn't it? if you want to test water, yeah. Uh, sorry, test your material if it's yep. going to print properly. We take your fabric that you think it might work. Yeah. Now you dip in the corners. Um, and if the water absorbs quickly into the material, it's perfect for marbling. Okay. Some so... fabrics will avoid water like a plague and they'll completely... Yeah, I've seen... Yes. Don't use so those. So I wonder how is the best way of us seeing this. Maybe so we can... Pour it in here. Yeah, if we... If we Pour it in there, that's great. Yeah. That's perfect, yeah. There we go, I'll get enough to be able to see. So yeah. there's the water. I'm yeah. going to just basically put the, the fabric into the water and you'll see what happens. That's already oh. wet. Yeah. It's immediately wet. Yeah. So that's a very good indication that this that's fabric is going to, be, work. going to work immediately. And then of course you pre-treat your, your fabric by yep. submerging it in your alum. Yeah. Drip drying and you're ready to go with your fabrics. Okay, right. I'm desperate to get started marbling. So we'll put that aside. <laughs> okay. That's all done. I want it all to come here. So that's basically mixing yep. the photo powder and the alum crystals to pre-treat your su surfaces. Now, what about papers and things? What kind of papers can we use? Paper, very good question. Yep. Um, we use brown paper. We use handmade pulp paper. We use um, any paper that is matte finish. Right. Um, so anything avoid, that's non-coated. Yes. Avoid coated paper. Yeah. Uh, that is glossed. Yep. Gloss paper. Avoid um, watercolor paper. Yeah. Because the oh, design of watercolor paper is to absorb, absorb and spread. That's what ah, its function I see. is. I would have thought, I would have immediately gone to it because it's so absorbent. Yes. Now, that's why need... Craft Academy is so valuable, everybody, because look how much we're learning. Yes, that is a very good point. So, yes, don't use um, that, that paper. Okay, so now the paints. What about diluting the paints? What do we need to do to do that? Well, we have um, these little canisters. These are I love this. <laughs> uh, this. Okay, everyone, I said you're going to start collecting can um, containers. <laughs> I'm going to start. Tell, tell everybody what these are, because they're brilliant. It's a brilliant These are pump. your basic old-fashioned film canisters for your film, the old-fashioned 35mm film containers. And how come you're holding that many? It's like <laughs> magic. This They're is, actually quite difficult to get hold of. You can buy them on eBay, but no, you know. It's, it's, hard. It's, not... it's hard though to hold this many in one go. Look, it's magic. There's a rubber band around there. Yes. That is a, that's genius. This is a, a very good tip, keeping it all up upright. Yeah, it will not genius. fall over. So you can use the base of the kit yep. to put your paints in. Okay. So there they are. We're going oh, to... Uh, what colours do we need? Right, so we're going to mix colours now. So Now soft water, again, a very good point. So we've got um, some soft water over there. That is deionized water. Okay. Yeah. And we're going to basically pour it into the jug, which we have over there. Well, oh, yep, yeah, there we go. So that, that is the, um, that's plenty. That's enough for all the, all the paints. Okay. And we're going to use the pipettes. I'm going to put that over here. Um, over here, yep. you can see, and we're going to give these a good shake. And we're going, they are sealed. Oh, it's quite, you can hear it's it. It's liquid paints, yes. Yeah. They need to be diluted one to one with water, soft water. Okay. So we've got our, our they're all sealed, they will not leak, which is lovely. Um, so we're going to unseal them, just pull them out like that, and open the I'm a container. Paint. So that's your yellow. We're going to do that for all the colours. Can I be your assistant and open while you mix? Sounds fantastic. 
I'll tell you what, we'll just do three colours. Okay. They're going to be all the same. So um, we can mix the primaries and we can mix a few primaries together to make it some other colours. So again, you squeeze your pipette like that, put it in and let it suck up all by itself. Do the same for the red. I love the way you squeeze it and then just leave it and it does it. It's magic. And that is your one portion. Okay. So you're going to put that into the three containers. We're going to do exactly the same in the water. That's one portion. Oops. <laughs> okay, one in there. So that's one to one. The same with the red. Oops. The same with the blue. <laughs> and that's how you mix your colors. Now that is sufficient paint for the a good morning session. Really? Wow. You that's... get 45 grams each color. That's a lot of paint when you're only using a small portion. Yes, because you're only going to use like drips of it, aren't exactly, you? Exactly, exactly. And that's how you mix your primaries. Now, if you want to mix your colors within your colors, yep. you can mix your secondaries, your tertiaries, tints and tones and hues with these colors here. So we're going to mix um, a bit of yellow and we're going to mix a bit of orange. So yellow and red will give you your orange. Oh, look at that. You've changed the color. That looks fab. So that's orange. And I guess we're going to do some green. So we're going to have, again, a bit of yellow. Yellow is quite a common color um, I use the most. And we're going to have some green. That's a nice shade of yellow too. And again, you can mix a whole range of variations of colors. <gasps> we can have our own color palette. Exactly. That's you really You can mix exciting. the colors that you love. Yeah. You can mix the colors to match your interior and make some amazing things. So we can um, have our whole house marbled. We can. <laughs> <laughs> Just examples. We've got yes. uh, two colors here, blue, which is mixed with a bit of violet, and the green with a bit of white. And that could be used for a lampshade, a coaster, and yeah. a cushion cover. So you've got your whole room sorted. Oh, wow. OK, so we're going to put these over here. Now we're going to cover for you at home the next, uh, next thing which is really important is we're going to cover the importance of covering uh, where you're working and your surfaces and so you can see step by step how we're actually going through the art of marbling but these are things you need to learn like how to clean up as well. Yes, a very good tip is to wear an apron yep. um, just to cover yourself with your clothing. Mm. Um, some kitchen roll on your table, but underneath the kitchen roll, just cut up a bin, a bin, bin bag. liner, yeah. bin bag liner, and you've got a base of plastic. Now, I've just used a white bin liner. Yep. You can use black, it doesn't make any difference. Um, and that will cover the table and you will be protected. Because this quality of marble is so good, it is going to, you do want to protect your surfaces, yes, don't you? Yes. What about actually cleaning up though, the tools and things um, like once that? Once you finish for the day, very yep. good question. What we do is we take off, take all the, the, the um, ink out. Yeah. Rinse this under a tap with warm water. Yeah. So literally, if this is your water and it's warm, yep. you basically just take out the ink by absorbing the water into the container, yep. into the pipette, and just keep squirting it out. Oh, that's actually quite fun, isn't it? You've even made cleaning up fun. <laughs> <laughs> now there's a little bit of paint that'll be sticking on the plastic. You can always just wipe it off with a, with a bit got... of kitchen towel or yeah. whatever you've got. You can reuse these little items as many times as you want to. So you've got a basic, a nice clean pipette at the end of the day. I love it, it's so clever. Well, we're gonna do a quick recap for you on what we've covered so far, and then get ready for our next lesson. So first of all, this is what we've done so far. So we've done preparing the floater liquid. So this is all getting started. So you're gonna read the instructions for the ratio of soft water and the floater powder, then heat the water to just below boiling point, whisk it in the whisk in the powders to make sure you don't get any blobs or any little lumps and then leave it to cool overnight and then we've gone through how to choose the best fabrics so dip the tip of the fabric into a little bit of water and if it's absorbent and it gets wet straight away it should work really well and then if it avoids the water then it will avoid the paint as well so it's not a product that will get you the best possible results 
And then don't forget we've covered how to choose the best paper. We've done diluting the paints and all of that included mixing colours and finally cleaning up. So now we're getting ready to do our next lesson, which is all part of Craft Academy. Thank <laughs> you.